Daily Planet. I'm Natasha Slowell. I'm Jay Ingram. Our week-long look at forensics continues today. Also on the show, the world's most precise clock, about 10,000 times more accurate than your average watch. And our last mind bender question of the season. But first, guns are often used in violent crimes, but it's only recently we've been able to track them and their distinctive bullets efficiently. Two centimeters in length. Thanks, Blaine. It's the final exam. And for these students at Penn State, processing a shot-up car is a whole lot better than the written thing. They're learning from Professor Bob Shaler that a bullet can tell you any number of things. Now, don't, don't damage that hole. Did somebody measure that, those, that hole, the, the width and length of that? The bullet's going to hit a number of things, and it will carry with it uh, evidence that gets attached to the bullet as it goes through articles. So if a bullet goes through somebody, there's going to be blood on it. There's a lot of fibers on it from the clothing. If the bullet went through, say, a pillow beforehand, it might have some feather attached to it or some fibers from the pillow attached to it. So you're going to get the, the trajectory history of that bullet in the form of physical evidence. In the real world, after investigators have figured out all they can from the crime scene, what they really want to know is, does the bullet relate to any other recorded gun crime? But linking the bullet to the gun to the criminal is not always easy. To match a bullet uh, to a gun, it, it might be easy or it might be difficult, depending on the bullet. If the bullet has entered, let's say, uh, has hit a bone or something, if the bullet is not pristine, uh, it will be harder to relate it to a gun. So sometimes it, it can take you from one hour to, uh, let's say, one day or two, if uh, the match is really hard to make. Often it's time investigators don't have. Over the last uh, 20 years, firearms of crime has gone up significantly. Uh, the volumes of uh, shooting crimes, the amount of firearms recovered in crime scenes has made it very difficult for experts to uh, work on these uh, on the using the traditional method of comparing bullets under the microscope. Uh, backlogs have increased at law enforcement agencies around the world to the point where they were eliminating comparisons and not doing the work because of the sheer volumes. Montreal-based forensic technology is helping to alleviate the workload with a number of machines that perform ballistics comparisons at lightning speed. They revolutionize the field with their Integrated Ballistics Identification System, or IBIS. IBIS has been able to uh, really change the way firearms experts look at evidence and recovered firearms. IBIS itself is a tool that enables experts to sort through thousands and thousands of cases or pieces of ballistic evidence in a matter of seconds, which traditionally would have taken them a lifetime to do these comparisons. In the past, investigators examined ballistics painstakingly with a comparison microscope and a keen eye. Then they'd have to sift through countless case files by hand to find a match. They look for microscopic marks uh, produced by the firearms that are transmitted over to these uh, pieces of evidence, the bullets and cartridge cases. The firearm, if, if you want to look at it in a sense uh, as fingerprints, each firearm has a unique signature. Basically, the fingerprint of that firearm is left on any piece of uh, uh, bullet or cartridge case that expelled from that firearm. Okay, so let's take a gun here. I have a gun in my hand, so what, what uh, happens is that when a bullet uh, goes through a barrel, okay, there's some rifling in the barrel. Why there, is there some rifling in the barrel? It's, it's because the, we want the bullet to have a nice tra trajectory. Okay, so when the bullet goes through the barrel, okay, small, very fine striers that are on the riflings will imprint on the bullet. So uh, later on when we find a bullet, uh, the bullet will have the signature of that gun. Exactly that gun and not another gun. So when a recovered gun arrives at the police lab, it's fired into a tank. The rifling creates lands and grooves on the bullets. If you think of the markings as ridges, then the lands are the peaks and the grooves are the valleys of those markings. IBIS documents and catalogues all of them. IBIS, what it does is it digitally photographs uh, a physical piece of evidence and com converts that into a mathematical signature which the system can then use to compare and rank all the pieces of evidence in a database. When we have a new gun, automatically the, 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 the IBIS system will compare with all uh, unsolved cases and it will give us the two or three best matches. 
Now there's a new IBIS machine called Bullet Tracks 3D. Not only is it fast, it's giving experts more detail than ever before. The system itself uses a confocal microscope. This microscope is a high-tech piece of equipment that is able to take 500 photographs of a certain area that it's uh, looking at. These 500 photographs are then com converted into a uh, topographic model of the surface of that area. A good analogy for the comparison between uh, IBIS or traditional methods and Bullet Tracks 3D is uh, with IBIS, look at it from a standpoint of flying over the Grand Canyon at about 30,000 feet and seeing a good overall view of the canyon. With Bullet Tracks 3D, it's like flying in a helicopter right in the canyon itself. You're going up one side of the canyon, down the other side, right into the bottom of the canyon and seeing all the details in that canyon. IBIS is networked across the country, so if a crime occurs in one city but the gun is recovered in another, the system can make the link. It's also used to compare more than bullets. These two cartridge cases are fired from the same weapon based on the marks that are in very similar positions to each other and they correspond to each other when looking at them. The expert, using a comparison, is able to compare the marks, see the details on the breech face marks, look at the firing pin, compare the firing pin marks also and look for details in those firing pins to see if they're fired from the same weapon. Of course, good technology will only get you so close to the target. It's not always a good guy who wins in the real life. Even if we have a good proof, the bad guy uh, gets away anyway because he has a good lawyer and the, uh, the, the trial will go out on, on another matter. But technicalities aren't going to stop investigators, new and old, from continuing their efforts to put the bad guys away.